Okay, the beginning's gonna be kind of a rehash, but who here has seen Avatar? Who's seen Transformers, either one? And who's seen 300? Okay. Okay, the things about these movies are that they're blockbusters, they have great visuals, usually uh, pretty good action sequences, but the story is usually not engaging on a, sub on a subconscious level, and it's usually very poor writing, as I usually see in Transformers. Who has seen the movie Brick? One person. Wow, that was, that was more than I expected. Who has, seen a, who has seen Aguirre, The Wrath of God? And who has seen a movie called Red Cockroaches? So the funny thing is, these three movies are considered incredibly deep, driving stories, and they've also been very critically acclaimed by people, but the thing is, they have had very little to no release because of their budgets originally. Avatar has a budget of $500 million. Transformers has a budget of $150 million. And 300 has a budget of $100 million. Brick has a budget of $800,000. Aguirre, The Wrath of God, has a budget of $60,000. And Red Cockroaches has a budget of $2,000. Red Cockroaches is actually done by my friend Miguel Coyula. He took him two years to make it, but it's a critically acclaimed film. But this doesn't mean no budget films can come out even more driving and real than any big budget film that comes out of any studio. And I'm here to teach you the basic elements to no budget filmmaking. There are three basic elements of any film. Uh, not They're specific to all filming, but these are very, very specific for no, bu no budget dramatic films. It's the equipment, the talent, and the connections you have. There are three main pieces of equipment that you require. An inexpensive camera is number one. This can be like a Sony or a Panasonic Handycam. That's great for early work. It's very low cost, generally very sturdy. Uh, roughly running about $200 to $300. You can probably most likely get it on Amazon.com, MovieMaker.com, and StudentFilmmakers.com. They have generally decent prices regarding cameras. The best thing to, camera to record on is a mini DV. They're very small cassette tapes. Uh, they run for about $14 for a pack of three, and re-recording over them is not advisable but because it can corrupt footage, but it still is very possible, so you won't have to keep reusing things. Do not record on DVD cameras, period. DVDs scratch incredibly easily, and also their formats are rarely ever accepted into computers to edit on programs with. Second piece of equipment what you'll need is a shotgun microphone. Usually you get lapel mics, the mics that clip right here so you get better sound, but if they're not professional, they'll pick up the rustling of your clothes more than anything else. Uh, I've worked with some very old lavalier mics, and you clip it right here, and you just hear the rustling of your shirt. That's pretty much it. Uh, basic a shotgun mics usually costs roughly from $15 to $25. It picks up sound fairly well. Unfortunately, sometimes it picks up the sound a little too well. You can get a lot of background ambience that you really don't need, but up, as opposed to just getting clothes, it's better than nothing. Uh, and more open, usually you can put yourself on a boom pole, which actually you can make out of PVC pipe. It, it can run about $5 for the pipe and duct tape. The last bit of equipment that you really need is basic editing software and screenwriting software. Basic editing software, there's a lot of editing programs that come already equipped with computers such as Windows Movie Maker and iMovie from Macintosh. Uh, there are very cheap editing programs that you can also get called, uh, there are such things as Sony Vegas. Uh, you can also get older versions of Adobe Premiere Pro. I got my own copy, which is like one of the first ones for 150 bucks. That is generally really uh, cheap in regards to different types of editing programs. You can also get older versions of Final Cut, which is the best editing program in the market. A brand new one, which just I bought recently, cost me about $1,000. So when you're wanting to make a no-budget film, I don't recommend you go you and go and do that. When it comes to screenwriting software, there's Celtics, uh, which is a free program you can get off the line. It's completely like usable, and it's very easy to get to use. Uh, Sophocles is another program. That runs money. Unfortunately, the program is now... Retired, but before it before it came off the market, it was $140. So relatively, it wasn't that expensive. When it comes to professional uh, programs, you have things like Final Cut, but they run about $1,000 a piece, and it's really not worth the money. 
Other basic equipment that you don't necessarily need is a tripod beforehand. Like, tripods are a great thing to use, but beforehand I used a bucket and a stack of books. So, you know, if you don't have money, you can always utilize whatever you have around the house. I call it MacGyver and Gorilla Filmmaking. Uh, also, headphones are a good thing so you can see how well sound is picked, picked up. And also a cleaning cassette, because when the cameras get dirty, you can lose an entire night's worth of footage. I did that on one of my productions, and it set me back almost a month. You're at five minutes. Just let me know. Okay. The last two things you require, all right, one thing you need is two types of talent, seen and unseen. Seen are people who are your actors, people you go on screen and they play out the narrative that you decide. Most times directors won't be a major actor in the story unless they're trying to go for an Orson Welles montage, but most often cases that's not the case. Actors and actresses are usually just friends that you know, people that you have, uh, are come in contact with that have a general interest in acting. Uh, and unseen is just the crew. The camera operator is usually the director, or myself for that matter. Boom operator is usually a person who just holds the microphone, preferably a friend who's uh, knowledgeable in the ways of recording music and sound so they know not to bustle the camera, the boom all around to make the uh, sound go through the cord. And the last thing you'll need is an editor. Usually, in most cases, it's the director. However, you can be a friend who is, you can also have a friend that is more skilled at editing than you. Like high school programs nowadays teach editing. I learned a lot of editing at the North Carroll uh, uh, script and video production class. The last thing you really need is connections. If you want more than living room distribution with your family and friends, connections are, not, are essential but not necessarily hard to come by. In three major places, you can go and go to the Carroll Arts Council here in Westminster. It costs $70 an hour to screen something, but it's relatively cheap to uh, try to get a movie screen. You can go to Baltimore ha Art Houses and events, like the Art House and Lounge in Central Baltimore or Artscape. They're low paying for rent space and usually depends on the length of the film. You can also go to a public access station, which I did when I first started filmmaking. My start was at the Carroll Media Center down the street. Uh, you have to pay through training and camera equipment, uh, but you, it's also a good training to help you out. It's a place to showcase your films, and also I won an award by doing so. And the last thing to get, which usually is meant for professional filmmakers, it's film festivals. Getting accepted into film festivals is the hardest thing to do, but every filmmaker should strive to do that at some point after beginning their career. To really summarize, make sure you have all the, all the aforementioned equipment at least. Not just that, you need to have more than that for most cases, but at least you need a camera, a microphone, and editing and script writing software. You need talent in front and behind of the camera to even make the movie work. That's just logic. And when it comes down to the connections you to bring yourself to the screen, television or theater, you can have many different venues that can really showcase your work, but you really gotta know where to look and you really know how you need to know how to haggle so you don't have to pay more than you need to. Regardless of how low grade the equipment or the film looks at the very end of your production, it doesn't mean that it can't blossom into something great. Because my friend Miguel, he made a movie for two thousand dollars. He made a hand, it was a handy cam Panasonic film, and he's won twenty film festivals all over the world. His most recent movie he just screened at the Sundance Film Festival. He made it for fifty grand. So you know, when it comes down to no budget filmmaking, it's just a great place to kind of uh, hone your skills in order to get yourself into a film school or get yourself along with your career. Thank you. Good job.